Good morning, everybody. Especially today. Yeah, we're so excited. It is our one year anniversary. Woo! Yay, we did Can it. Can you believe it? Kind of. Ah, oh my God. Oh, I'm so glad oh. that didn't go everywhere. Oh. Um, pour it up. I'm so happy to have been doing this with you for a year. Yeah, and, and you. Yeah, and you, and you. Thank you so much to everyone who's <laughs> tuned in over the last year. Um, We've truly felt the love over the last year, and we hope that you feel it coming right back at all of y'all. It's been so incredible to celebrate our community, the incredible people who live here, the incredible businesses in our town, and the spirit of Provincetown that we get to live in every day. Speaking of incredible businesses in town, Relish sent us some anniversary cupcakes. So cute. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, oh guys. Are we breaking our no eating on camera rule today? I'm going to eat all five of these during the Michelle Axelson video. Perfect, perfect. I think Good there's plan. one for you over there. Um, so what did you do this week? How was your week? Um, my week was tons of fun. Um, one of the highlights of my week, and I know Monday night was a highlight for you, but me and Bob had a really incredible edition of trivia right here at the Provincetown Brewing Company. It was tons of fun. Everyone was packed inside. We had plenty and tons of teams. Mm -hmm. And then me and Bob parted ways for, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, um, battling venues. They weren't battling. I think both of them were <laughs> They were full both packed. And everybody, so, that's yeah. the thing is everything's packed now. Yeah. Even though Monday is the busiest night of the week, all of a sudden, every single thing that there is to do on Monday is jam packed, yeah. filled. And Showgirls was amazing How'd because you do? I won. <gasps> Bob won! Well, I, I tied Kaya, who's singing later. Oh, we have an incredible show for you today, guys. Yeah. Kaya, who was our very first musical guest, is back for our anniversary mm -hmm, show. Mm -hmm. Murray Bartlett, who was our first celebrity interview, is back because he has a show coming out on HBO next Sunday, July 11th, called The White Lotus. And boy, is it dark. It's right up it's, my alley. I love it. I, it's dark. It's dark. And yeah. I mean, obviously, Murray's my man man when it comes to actors, but the people in the show are really incredible. We'll talk about that with Murray later. Let's talk about my uh, winning Showgirls performance okay. more. Sure. Yeah. Go for it. So, I heard it was incredible. I wasn't there, but we'll talk about why after. It went well, and you know this as a performer, when you're like, it didn't go perfectly, and you're your own worst critic, and I couldn't even watch it back. Uh, Doug and I rewrote life. the lyrics to Age of Aquarius, and it was the Age of Bulgaria. And we had uh, custom-made Bulgarian T-shirts, costume reveals, mo you know, moods, moments, a video with a dick montage. Did you watch the dick montage video? You were probably backstage. Bulgarian dicks? Uh, well, there was a lyric about how much foreskin there is in Bulgaria, and so we had a bunch of uncut dicks on a video. And I think that was everybody's favorite part. I think we won because of the dicks. And the vocals. And the lyrics. Yeah. It went really well. Were there props? There were props. There I was just, that, yeah. There I was just think lots. of you as a prop comic. I am a prop comic. There was yeah. lots of everything. A pun, a pun and prop comic. How did your performance go on Monday? It went great. It was so much fun. It was truly an honor to sing with Mike and his band. They were so incredible. Some of the most incredible musicians I've had the opportunity to work with. Um, I sang some Fleetwood Mac. I sang some Jess Glynn, uh, Clean Bandit. I, I, it was also truly an honor to once again sing with Joel. He is so incredible. I'm blown away by him every time he gets on stage. Um, we duetted on Unforgettable. Oh, who was Natalie? I think I was Natalie. Yeah. We split it up. Oh, yeah. okay. It was really cute. And just to sing Unforgettable with someone who is truly so unforgettable like Joel was truly an honor. And then Joel did his set. And I was honestly in awe the entire time. He's such an incredible showman, such an incredible vocalist. It was just so fun watching him. And then I got brought back on. We sang What's Up by Four Non Blondes. Oh. And that's one of those songs where, like, if you're in hearing distance of that song, you could, like, you would explode trying to not sing along. 
That was also the last song played at Fag Bash on Wednesday. Well, that's because the Fag Bash theme this week was Dolly presents... Dollywood presents... Dollywood presents gentlemen pre-4 non-blondes. Oh, pre-4. I get it now. Did you make it? I went for the last half hour. I went for the first half hour. I mean, I worked, <laughs> and then I went, oh, you're off on Wednesdays. You get to go to the whole thing. I... I was only there for about a half an hour. I have to like race after work. Right, right. So I can never be like part of the costuming and all that. But it's nice to see everybody dolled up. Joel Harms, always a highlight at Fag Bash. Oh, he always. had like, you know, the Linda Perry, like the big hat with the goggles on it. And at first mm -hmm. I thought he was Slash from Guns N' Roses. And I was like, I don't get how this ties into the Four Non Blondes thing. And he's like, this is Linda Perry, not Slash. And I was like, they look surprisingly similar when you think well, about Slash it. Well, Slash doesn't do the goggles, does he, he? I think he does. Does he? No. Mark is wow. saying no, and Mark was older Mark's than I was in the 80s. Mark's fact checker. Mark's older than I am now, but you were an adult in the 80s, so I'm going to take your word for it. Yeah. Um, but it was tons of fun. I <laughs> got caught in the rain on my way there, so I was a, a wet mess when I got there, but luckily I wasn't wearing tons of clothes, so they didn't have to dry. <laughs> so that was good. Tuesday was, you know what? I think Tuesday was my favorite day of the summer so far. What'd you do? I did the bike trail, and then when I got to Herring Cove, I was like, you know what? I haven't jumped in yet. I never jump in in June, and I went into the ocean for about 20 minutes. I ran into Brian Van Allen there, and we just stood in the shallows. Sha, 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 shallows. Sha, shallows. How does that go? And talked, <laughs> and the water was like perfect. It was like warm. I didn't expect it to be that warm, and I didn't want to leave, but I had to come and work with you. So, no, but that, that, that I had was, that to was, come and work with you. That was part of my favorite day of the great, summer, great, is great. what I'm saying. No, so I jumped into the ocean, I went to the gym, and so I was feeling really like happy and healthy, mm -hmm. and then I went and had a great night at work. Yeah. And it really felt like it was the start of like the proper summer for me. Yeah. And I encourage everybody to jump in. Don't be afraid of sharks. Don't forget what Brian Laguerre said last week. Was that two weeks ago? About safe. They did shut down one of the beaches. That was race point. I, I wouldn't go in at race point. That's insanity. Yeah, just go like a just go like a, a kilometer away. Sharks can't swim or anything. It's colder at race point, and there's more likely to be sharks there. That's just a fact. Okay. Go to Herring Cove and I wasn't in any further than this, and you could kind of see what's going on. There were no seals. That's the telltale sign. If you see seals, you know. If you see something, say something. I mean, I went, away. I went to the beach on Wednesday and I jumped in, but every time I jumped in underwater, it would like come up so fast. I'm like, oh, they're here. But um, <laughs> we can't yeah. live like that in fear of I a shark just, attack. I just tried to make sure I was near someone who looked more like a seal than I did, which at Boy Beach is a challenge because most guys look like, especially this week, um, just like chiseled statues. Mm. Oh, was it super like circuity at the boy beach? Not super circuity. It was, it was definitely leaned a little more that way than usual, but it was still a fun, mixed, amazing, diverse crowd. Just wait till you see the A-House tonight. I will not see the A-House tonight. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna, I, I, usually, I, I usually just like kind of take the fourth off. Oh. From like going wild. Really? Yeah. So your day off today after the show, you're not going to go do anything? I'm going to do stuff. Like what? I don't know. I, all my days off have been gorgeous and sunny. I've been very lucky so far. Um, so I like haven't even put any thought into what I would do on a rainy day. Is it going to keep raining? It's not even raining right now. Oh. Let's do weather. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's been pouring. Yesterday I was at Pepe's having lunch and I was supposed to go and do all these other things. We just stayed there for like two hours in the pouring rain drinking frozen Aperol spritzes. For Aperols. For Aperols yeah. with a cava float, yeah. speaking of. Um, and got shammered oh. in the rain. Cheers. Cheers. Mm, happy one year. Happy one year. Yeah. No, I went to Pepe's last week. Um, who was I with? Just a couple friends and we all obviously just did a round of Aperols. Yeah, they're fun. But you know, you always say to the waitress, oh, just one more, don't let me have another one. Oh, it was with Trevor. You were yeah. drinking frapper rolls with Trevor. How was your frapper roll? So it's good. so good. It's like uh, one of my favorite things to have there. Yeah. And our, JR, our bartender, was so fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had Deanna for my server, who's lovely. <laughs> She's a very Deanna. dear friend. Yeah. And she did not listen to me when I said, don't bring me another one. But thank you for that, Deanna. Whenever people are like, this is the last one, I'm like, we'll see. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's never. It never is. But it is going to, unfortunately, this 4th of July weekend is going to be a little gray and cloudy. Um, today rain, tomorrow rain, Sunday the rain will wrap up in the morning and hopefully it'll just be cloudy throughout the day so you can run around, um, be on the deck at tea. I mean, I don't think the rain is going to stop us. I, it never does. The year before I moved to Provincetown, I came to 4th of July for, I think it was Hurricane Andrew Ooh. when that happened. It wasn't crazy, but it was rainy. One of my favorite Provincetown stories 
ever happened what? that weekend. I'll what? try to tell it fast. Okay. I was at the end of the ferry dock buying my ferry ticket for the next morning to leave with my friend Matt McGuire, who now lives in town along with me. And so we're on the end of the ferry dock. It starts torrential rain. So we like booked it down the ferry dock, popped under the first awning we could find, which happened to be um, Body Body, which we miss so much. And we're standing there for like five minutes and everyone else is kind of lining the roads under all the um, awnings and stuff. And then I turned to Matt, I'm like, I have an idea. He's like, what? I'm like, let's buy Speedos at Body Body. We'll put all our clothes in the bag they give us and then we'll run down Commercial Street to meet our friends. And he's like, I'm on board. So me and Matt bought matching tiny little Speedos, put them on in the dressing room, put our clothes in the bag and sprinted down Commercial Street. It was like a parade because no one was in the street and the, but the streets were entirely lined and mm. just me and Matt running down while everyone cheered for us. <laughs> Sounds very like Sex in the City-ish. Oh, so much. I'm totally a Like carry. with your heels in your hand running down the street. Yeah, very that. Um, but we were not warmly welcomed when we come screeching in nearly naked and soaking wet into Monkey Bar. Oh, Monkey Bar. I thought you were going to the book slip. No, so it was body body to monkey bar. It was quite the haul. Hmm. That's yeah. That's, that's a, a fun sprint. Yeah, it's a fun P town story. Though. That is a fun yeah. P town story. But even if it is rainy this weekend, there's tons to do. The Pam has a really marvelous exhibit mm -hmm. of uh, Hawthorne, Hop Hoffman and Hopper. Wow. Uh, thanks, Chris McCarthy, for making me say that. Hawthorne, <laughs> Hoffman and Hopper. It's preserving a legacy. These are these are three of Provincetown's most iconic artists. The ex exhibit is up uh, through October. And also coming soon is the 12 by 12 member auction. I always go oh, I love that. and bid on a couple of pieces mm -hmm. and try to win. Last year I got one from Andrea Sawyer and it was a uh, Portuguese festival scene on Commercial Street. Oh, but gorgeous. it was like all the Portuguese flags and a single biker because of course last year there was nobody in the street. Mm -hmm. So like that's one of the paintings in my house where I'm like, I'll always remember when that was. That's cute. I loved it and I was so happy to win that in the auction. Yeah. Um, also, if you're up Cape in Dennis, you can go to the Cape Cod Museum of Art and see this really incredible uh, immersive experience that our friend Mark Adams helped install. It is envisioning Cape Cod before the sea levels rose 200 feet, back when George's Bank was an island with mastodons on it. So it's like 11,000 years ago. They have maps from the 1500s mm -hmm. of what it looked like then and before. And Mark's room, uh, the of course, this is very Mark Adams, like the floor is painted to look like the uh, mm -hmm. floor of the sea. And then all of the walls in the room are, it's just incredible. You have to go if you have time to go to Dennis and check that out. Yeah. Um, Mark Adams is one of my favorite artists. One of my favorite art experiences ever was his show at the Pam a few years back. Mm -hmm. So incredible. The Mark Adams retrospective. Yeah, exactly. And I've had the opportunity to hang out with him a few times and he's just like, overflowing with knowledge and I just try to absorb as much of it as I can. Mostly like map knowledge, which I yeah. find fascinating. Cartography, it is like a cartography exhibit at the mm -hmm. uh, CC MOA. Do people call it that? The Cape Cod Museum of Art? You, wait, let's do it. It's like ccmoa.org, so I guess that's what people call it. CC MOA, we're doing it. Check out the CC MOA. Yeah. Um, also, you know what happened to me this week that really, really sucked? So Monday night, probably <laughs> while I was at Showgirls, my Facebook got hacked by somebody in Detroit, and they changed not only my password, but the email address associated with my Facebook account. I haven't been able to get in since Monday, and that's how I like promote the show and communicate with a lot of people. Does anyone know anyone at Facebook that can help Bob? Help me, because people are like, are you, are you in Facebook jail? I can't find your thing. I tried um, emailing you, and I'm like, I don't, I don't know if it's technically Facebook jail. I didn't do anything. I didn't like post that dick video from Showgirls on Facebook, that certainly would have got me in trouble, but I didn't do that. I didn't do anything wrong. I swear, Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> if you're watching this, I didn't do anything wrong. He's probably watching. I, he probably is watching. Oh, you know what? Did we tell everybody that we were just on NBC10 in Boston? Oh my God. It's been such a whirlwind this, whirlwind this morning. I keep saying whirlwind. <laughs> I've been doing, I've said that like four times in the past two weeks, I don't know why, so sorry. But it was a whirlwind this morning. We were on NBC 10 this morning with Susan Tran. She had us on to talk about um, Fourth of July weekend in Provincetown. We talked about a few incredible shows to see, the Billy and Elton show with John Richardson and Todd Alsip, Thirsty's show. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about our one year anniversary show. We talked about how hot and wet the clubs are gonna be this weekend. Okay. It's, it's sticky in there on a normal night, yeah. even when there's like air moving around. It's gonna be hot and sticky, but that's mm -hmm. what people like about the clubs here, right? Yeah. Like not being able to peel your feet off the floor, you hang onto the ceiling. Maybe that's just fag bash. Yeah. <laughs> but the A house is going to be stick A. Can't the wait. Stick A house. Another exciting thing that you could do this weekend in the rain is the Water's Edge Cinema opened back mm, up. That's right. For the first time since 
But pre the pre panty. Yeah. Yeah. They're opening with two movies: The Summer of Soul and also Zola. Do you know anything about those movies? Zola looks incredible. It's based on a Twitter feed. This woman posted a like a wild night. She like live tweeted this wild night. I'm not sure if it was true or not, but they I just know that they based it on this really incredible Twitter feed. It is Riley. K that's how you say that name? I have no idea. That's why I said it like that. <laughs> uh, but it's Elvis's granddaughter. Uh huh. And I, they're, I don't know if the person who said this was serious, but they're like, she's going to win awards for this. Really? Yeah. Hmm. But it looks riotous and fun and funny, and the Water Jazz Cinema is the place to see it this weekend. Does this mean that now you can't run out the movie theater and watch this direct with your friends? I don't know. I tried to convince them to continue to do that. I think there should be one day a week where you can still run out the movie theater. I think if it's only one day, it's going to be quite expensive. Probably. Yeah. But let's let's talk Julie into that. Mm -hmm. um, you know what happens tonight, too, by the way? June Bar's opening back up. No way. Did you know that? No. For takeout only at, the, at first, I think once they're fully staffed, they'll be back open. But June Bar is finally back. Everybody is so excited. Please call them and order some flatbreads to go. Mm -hmm. uh, Audrey Duck and Eric sliders? will be there. Not yet. Okay. But we're very happy for you, Audrey and Eric and your team. Thank you guys so much for making this happen. And yeah. we will be in to see you soon. What did he say? I don't know. You I can still rent the theater. Oh, you, you can, still, can rent the theater. still rent the theater. Woo! We love to see it. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Excellent. So wait, any day of the week? We're going to find out later. He doesn't know. I don't know. What Nine else in the morning, Nine. exactly. <laughs> Because it is our first anniversary, we invited some dear friends and, and supporters of the show to come and sit in the audience today. Yeah. So this is kind of the first time that we've like seen people sitting right here. It's so cute. And it's so nice that it's people that we love very much. Thank you guys so much for coming. Yeah. Did you bring Bloody Marys? <laughs> oh, oh, just for you. He has a water bottle of Bloody Mary. Clay has been threatening. Is it your day off? No. no, he's been threat not threatening. He's been promising us for the, uh, the whole first year of this. He's like, one day I'm just going to show up with a cart of Bloody Marys, like an airline cart, and make you drinks and surprise you. And I was like, don't threaten me with a good time. Mm -hmm. It was it sounds like very like Mariah 01 when she pushed the popsicle cart onto TRL. Iconic moment. Iconic. Iconic lunacy. Yeah. What I else? I want to talk about one thing. I saw them popping up again, and last year there were so many all over town, which is lady slippers. Is that a flower? It is a flower. It's actually an endangered flower. It's a member of the orchid species, and you get to see them all over Provincetown. I think it's so magical and special that this endangered pink little flower um, just thrives right in Provincetown. I feel like that's very typical of Provincetown. Do you have a picture of one? I don't. No. I mean, I do, but I didn't give it to Jonathan. Jonathan had his hands full this morning with running our NBC interview and also the show and our one-year anniversary episode. So I, I was like, eh, well, we won't do pictures today. Do you have a rant or a rave? I, I'm leading right into my rant okay, or rave. Good. Don't you worry. So the later slippers are really incredible. The reason they're endangered is because they rely off this fungus in order for their seeds to germinate, which makes it kind of difficult, but I guess also very typical of Provincetown. Fungus abound. Tons of them. But... Do the walk around Claps Pond. There's tons of if you want to see them. But like I said, they are endangered, so please be careful. Which leads me right into my rant. I had to um, have a friendly conversation with one of my cohorts at the beach this past Wednesday. Um, please don't walk on any plants in Provincetown, period. You can walk on people's lawns, I guess. But if you're headed to the beach, I don't care if your feet hurt. Don't walk on grass. Don't walk on any plants. Um, Plants on the seashore are super important to maintaining um, soil erosion. Don't walk on them. Don't tread on me. Exactly. I think that the phrase is dies by the foot, grows by the inch. Is that it? Oh. Yeah. So like when you walk on these fragile things that are keeping our dunes up, don't. And if you see <laughs> someone doing it, just let them know. Yeah. That's what I did. I was like, excuse me, sir. I was like, don't walk on the plant. That makes them die. Did he hear that? He did. Did he respond in a positive manner? He was friendly. I well, he was in front of us, and I was like, "Sir, sir," and then I like kind of was like, "Don't." You, you like grabbed him by his stick. You're like, "Sir, oh my God. do not step on the plants." This is very nice, though. That's his kink, though, being yelled at about plants. Um, uh, this was at the boy beach, right? The it, nude beach. Yeah, but then he t well, we were walking out. Then he turned around, and um, the person I was with, they were. They knew each other, so it was like awkward because I was like, Wah! and then he was like, oh, hey. You can do it in a friendlier way. I did do it in a friendly-ish way. For you? No, I said, sir, sir, just don't walk on the plants. That kills them. That sounds friendly for you. Yeah. 
Also, don't forget that just because it's a nude beach doesn't mean you can't wear flip-flops. You yeah. keep, your, keep your shoes on and walk on the hot sand. Yeah, thongs are accepted. Yeah, thongs and dongs. As the person I was with, um, Dennis. Thongs, thongs, and bongs. That's your kind of beach, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I live for it. I want to rave, though, okay. for a second. I, I should have sent you this picture, Jonathan, but this morning, as you know, was a frenzy. I want to rave about people that don't. See, this is, a, this is actually a rant. Yeah. The people that don't. You know, there's that last spot in a line of parking spots. There's that last one. Don't pull to the absolute very front of that spot. Like, then it's really hard for somebody to parallel park in front of you. If you are the last spot, just back up a little. I have a picture of somebody I that did this. I don't understand what you mean. So, like, you know, here's a bunch of parking spots. Okay. okay the person's okay. car was here. So this person's car is here, oh, and I had a hard like time. Par right. Parallel spots. Right, parallel. Like yeah. a line of spots, specifically the ones past the red end that I need to park in for work. That's why I'm talking past about. Past the red end? Past the red end, right before the rotary. Okay. You know that brand new house, that, like, square brand mm -hmm. new house? There's, like, a, like, five or six spots there. And it, the one closest to the red end, if you park all the way in the front of that spot, it makes it harder for the people in front of you to fit into their spots. And it's a gray Kia with Massachusetts plates. Oh and God. next week, I'm going to show you this picture. Give the license plate. Give the license plate. Run them out of town. I mean, we're bound to know who it is. Yeah, I almost, I, but it took everything in me this past winter to not run the person with that red Jeep in the Sitco parking lot out of town. They just, <laughs> they stored their car there. And every time, they would move it like once a month and park terribly every time in like two spots, like up on the barrier. It was horrendous. I'm going to find this picture during the Michelle Axelson video and we're going to show it to you when we come back. <laughs> Is it time to show people that? No, 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 not yet. Okay. We have to blur out the license plate though because we can't. Okay, I can do that. Uh, okay, great. I'll um, do that. Speaking of bad parking, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> this past week at Boy Beach, I think it was Tuesday, um, yeah. a bunch of men had a boat that. The shade. <laughs> These people got so much shade. They, their boat w ran aground, and it was a bunch of <laughs> men in Speedos trying to push this gigantic boat off the ground. I think the tide went out, and they didn't plan for that. Um, but I think the reason, every, which is like, we usually support people like that. It's a little, typically you should have better boating skills if you're gonna be on a giant boat. But I think the reason people were so excited to see it happen was the fact that they were playing extremely loud music and so much so that the people said that you could hear it from where the bikes were parked. You could the, hear it from the breakwater. You, you could, could hear, hear it from, from the, the breakwater? breakwater? It was the same six <laughs> songs over, uh, over, uh, over Were they good? Yeah. So I heard it I'm going to guess it was like E.T. Oh. by Katy Perry or something over and over again. <gasps> <laughs> Mark, if there was a single Whitney Houston song on that playlist and you just referred to the entire thing as hideous and awful, I don't think we can be friends anymore. Wow. <laughs> Mark's but happy about that. <laughs> I'm always, I always wonder, how do you... What are the rules for music on the beach? Not that loud. Well, yeah. But I typically play it from my phone, and I don't know if everyone around me is a, a Charlie faggot like I am, so... If people, people keep looking at you... Well, they always look. Girl. The side eye? Oh, the side eye. Well, no, they do. They always have to be, too. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Um, it's just common courtesy. You know when your music's too loud. You just know. Like, we all just know. Right. It's obnoxious. Don't be obnoxious at the beach. Rule number one. Well, no, rule number one is don't step on the plants. Rule number two is don't be obnoxious. Right? Good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're referring to your notes? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I covered everything. One, I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. I smashed my phone last week, and it's making everything really difficult. Um, Kristen Becker released a comedy album this week. These are so soft. I can't wait to sink my teeth into one. Kristen well, comedy <laughs> album? Yeah. Check it out. It's. I think it's called Uppercut. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Kristen is a friend of the show. She's a friend of ours. She's truly incredible and one of the most hilarious people I know. Check out her comedy album. I haven't had a chance to listen to it, but I'm sure it is truly incredible. Also, our friend Mike Sullivan and his art was featured in a, an Irish queer art magazine. So follow him on Instagram. Get the details on that. Check that out. Um, Bob is just dying. The Macmillan Pier. We got that last um, image back up. Oh. They also face the sea. Mm -hmm. That's really exciting. I love, um, I think that's such an incredible welcome to Provincetown when you're coming in on the ferry. It's pictures of incredible, strong matriarchs of Portuguese families. It's called They Also Face the Sea because as their husbands went out to sea to fish, 
they also were kind of holding down the fort here, which is a legacy of incredible Portuguese matriarchs. So check them out. Look into who they, look into who they were. I guess we should go to Michelle's. Wait, video. no. You know our dear friend Jennifer Cabral spearheads the effort to raise money to repair those pictures. I love that. And Jennifer this week is in the Cake at the Provincetown Theater. Remember our David Drake interview? Oh, yeah. The Cake opened last Monday. They had to cancel a couple shows this week due to weather because all Bummer. of the shows there are still outside. Yeah. But go see the Cake. It's Monday through Thursday this week at the Provincetown Theater. Jen and Ian are fantastic in it. Mm -hmm. uh, they are. They're fantastic in everything they, they do, are. including Facebook posts. There. So uh, enjoy this. <laughs> interview with Michelle Axelson, you guys, yeah. while I eat this cupcake. Michelle Axelson. Michelle, thank you so much for making some time to come on the show. Thanks for coming. Can you tell everybody a little bit about your personal relationship with Provincetown? Sure. Uh, I'm it because about your personal relationship with Provincetown? Sure. Um, I moved here in November 2011. Um, I thought I was coming for four months. I was gonna do some healing personally and professionally and go back to my life in Boston. I was a social worker in Boston. I moved here and immediately started looking for a summer rental. I fell in love with being, I moved here and I didn't know anybody mm -hmm. in Boston. I was pretty shy and quiet. In Provincetown, I was able to meet business owners. Within two weeks, Sim then worked at Joe's, knew what I drank and I felt at home and I felt a sense of community I never felt anywhere else. Um, I loved being by the water. And so I didn't know a way to make a life as a young 30 something year old in Provincetown. I didn't know what my career or life could look like. And I wasn't fully ready to go back to social work. Um, I became friends with the women who owned Women Crafts at the time. I came in, I mean, honestly, I was heartbroken and not doing well when I came here. And I came into the shop and I was buying a Pema Chodron book, like When Things Fall Apart. And a cheesy lesbian song was on the, on the <laughs> overhead and I'm crying and trying to keep to myself and the owner of the shop was like you can come here anytime you want you can spend as much time here as you want and little did I know I spend all of my time here now um, but I remember the song that was playing I remember how nice they were to me and people were so nice to me everywhere that's like the town vibe right away it was so nice and so welcoming and um, so I considered staying and when I started working at Women Crafts, it was my get well job. Like working in retail was never something I did. I never lived in a seasonal community. I didn't understand like the busy hours and then winters off and making that work and making sense of that. Um, but I started to do it and I didn't stop. I had worked for the shop for like three years and Catherine and Wendy who owned the shop were thinking about retiring and approached me about buying the shop and that seemed impossible at the time, but I did, I bought it in 2015. And so my relationship to Provincetown has become centered in the shop, um, but also as we all know, it's a small town and for me, like I'm somebody who like when you notice a lack or something that's missing, instead of bitching about it, it's your job to do it. Mm -hmm. Being the hot potato of like, oh fuck, no one's taking care of this. Or for me, it's about protest and okay, this event is happening nationally and I feel a little judgmental of myself living out here at the end of the world and not having an impact, certainly around the Trump stuff. But before that, and so like feeling like I should be in DC, I should be, um, you know, with Trayvon Martin, I had a really like physical reaction to like, what kind of asshole does not show up physically? Like where you're needed? And so like I came up with like showing up in Provincetown and if it was me and three friends and four people saw us, it, like I need to remember that I said something, did something, represented something. And I think people look to us in Provincetown, like people dream about living here and people think like we have this like queer fantasy land. And then some of us become complacent because we do and it's easy. And so it's easy not to show up for things nationally because we can just hide here in this bubble. But for me, I think like people visiting on the day that marriage became legal, when the Supreme Court made that decision, people needed to see that we erupted into the streets and showed up at town hall. And, and that was a big one, but there's been little markers all along the way. And so for me, like I'm rooted, my Provincetown experience is literally in this building, but it's also for a shy person, it's walking down the street with a bullhorn and standing in front of town hall with a protest sign. I know activism is still really important to you, especially in the art that you represent. Can you talk a little bit about the artists that you have in here? Sure, in the shop right now, we have six um, huge portraits uh, by the artist Jo Hay, she's local. Um, it's from her Per Sisters series. Some people saw a big version of the show at, during Women's Week at the Commons. It was the first big show at the Commons when they opened. 
Um, and right now there are currently 18 paintings of her sister. So her first one was Elizabeth Warren after Mitch McConnell said, nevertheless, she persisted. And, mm -hmm. and it's become this rallying cry of the women who, of course, continue to persist. So where you and I are standing, I'm looking at Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Amanda Gorman, Rachel Maddow, Kamala Harris, Stacey Abrams, Megan Rapino. And having these gorgeous pieces of art in the shop is a big deal. The women crafts, like our priority is affordable art, art for real people, art made by women, art that is craft. Um, and craft is also a feminist issue. Like people think of fine art um, has privilege and crafting has been women's domain, right? And so trying to elevate the work of women. So these paintings are absolutely fine art. So to have them in the shop and have something this powerful here is a big deal for me. Joe's my friend and I would have never thought to ask her to have her work here because it deserves to be seen and big galleries taken seriously. But the weight of them in this space surrounded by a sticker that a young girl can buy for four dollars while they look aspirationally at these paintings is a big fucking deal. And having little kids come in and point to RBG and know who she is and talk to the parents and have people wonder like well who's Megan Rapino and why is she important in this series and talking about equity and women's pay and particularly in sports but also across the board. Um, with Joe and I and our increasing friendship and as I was with her while she worked on the Stacey Abrams painting and finished it the day Stacey like delivered Georgia and delivered democracy to fucking 2021 without Stacey Abrams we would be screwed. Mm -hmm. um, so to have Stacey and Kamala on the wall is a big deal um, and Joe has done a beautiful job and her and my relationship and our relationship to the shop like prioritizes this shop as a space that is deserving of the weightiness of this art and that the people who come in here couldn't afford to buy a painting like this but they deserve to look at it and see mm -hmm. it and for me like having this art in the room heals the parts of us us you too of like growing up in elementary school having the walls lined with the white presidents mm -hmm. old white men that don't represent how you feel maybe in the world how i felt in the world but looking at these women like rachel maddow who has a house down the street is a real person but she's changing our social structure and right. how we understand the news and how we understand the world these people are relatable those old white men did nothing for me and didn't help me but people coming in the shop and young kids boys and girls coming in the shop and seeing like this is how it could be um, that's really important to me. So the other art in the shop is more things like pottery and glasswork and yeah, jewelry and, um, and those are all by women who I have relationships with who are supporting themselves by being small business owners. You know, the shop supports about 100 female artists. Um, and you said that for the entire 45 years that the stores existed, mm -hmm. it's been books by women, art by women, crafts by women. So everything in here was made by women, right? Yeah. Yeah, so always by women. Um, I would say we have art made by trans people and however they identify one of my best selling lines of mugs, which I'm sold out of, um, is this line of queer pottery that um, says things like bi furious, literary lesbian, queer, they, them. Um, that potter is a trans potter who, when they approached me about having their work in the shop, we talked about like how I would be so proud to have their work. Would they be proud to be a associated with the shop how does the name of the shop feel to them and we talked about it and we discuss it and and he writes about his relationship to the shop and it doesn't feel discordant and it doesn't feel like cognitive dissonance it feels like this is a home for him and that feels good to me so over the course of 45 years of course there's been awesome books written by men and i recommend them but like this year obama's book like sure i could carry barack obama's book but i carry michelle's and one of the reasons we carry only books written by women is that there are more female authors. They're reviewed less, they're displayed less, they have shorter publishing runs. We're not done with that. So the mission of the shop at the beginning was to give air and space to women's art and women's writing because they're not at large. And so the shop's mission also comes with a desire to be irrelevant, but we're not yet irrelevant. That's still not true about publishing. It's hard to get a Toni Morrison book give me a fucking break. You know, when she died, of course, sales spiked. But every week when I order books, I have to like beg to find two books because they don't value her work. But because I keep buying it, because people keep displaying it, the message has to get out to publishing. Like you need to run women's books. You need to run women of color's books. Um, You're already uh, experiencing a pretty good summer, right? Yes. Are you gonna take some time for yourself to enjoy farm stuff? 
This is the first year that I have a full day off. Good. So I'm not working on Sundays. Mm -hmm. So that's really good. And I'm open fewer hours. What we found during last summer, which was scary, and I could only have four people in the shop. Um, it was exhausting wearing a mask all day and talking to people. So my neighbors and friends, business owners, and I decided to be open shorter hours. And we survived. Mm -hmm. And that made us look at like, so for 45 years, we were open like 10 to 10 a lot. It's not necessary. I hope if people are in town, they'll come back. Um, I know that nothing I carry here is of critical need. Like maybe you want it, but you'll be okay if you don't get that mug tonight. <laughs> um, so the work-life balance, um, COVID really helped think about that and prioritize that. And I want to see the sunset. Last summer was the first time I swam in a pond in Wellfleet. Really? Because I closed early enough to go. Right. So I want to keep doing that this summer. Excellent. Well, good luck. Thank you for keeping the mission alive in the spirit of the store. Thank you. And uh, have a great summer. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Yeah. We'll see you guys soon. I love Michelle so much. Uh, that was the first time I'd ever met her. And I don't know if you know this, I have a sort of personal connection to her because the woman who sold her that store sold me my house. No way. Yeah, and these ladies were so spectacular to us because, of course, even in 2014, everything was going into a bidding war. And those ladies were like, these guys live and work in town. We're going to sell it to them. I love that. Because they're actually going to live in it. You sell know, me like, your house. So thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you for selling the store to Michelle, who's doing yeah. a great job keeping the spirit of that store alive. Jonathan, do you have that picture of the car? Before we go turn things over to our divine diva of the dunes for another spectacular vocal performance, I want to show people this car. So this is what I'm talking about. That car should be at the back of that spot because there's nobody behind it. Are you looking at what I'm talking about right now? I, I don't know if everybody shreds. in the room can see this picture, but it's absurd that that person would park at the very front of that parking spot. If you own that gray Kia, I hate you forever. <laughs> Unless you're a fan of the show. <laughs> um, one more thing, and um, Michelle does a really incredible job creating um, a space to highlight women's yes. art and stuff. And someone in the comments posted, um, where are the women's spaces in town? I just wanted to highlight one really quick. Sunday, right here at the brewery from two to five. Dyke Dock. Yeah, Kristen Becker hosts a really incredible party for the women in town. It's called Dyke Dock. It's so much fun. I've seen little videos, pictures of it all. Kristen does such a great job hosting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so please stop by. Um, it's a lot of fun. And now, the real winner of Monday's Showgirls. Kaya has gone to three of the four Showgirls that they've had so far, and she has either won alone or tied for first every yeah. single time that she's performed. She's, she's flipping her 40 inches it right now. It should come as no surprise to you once you hear these golden pipes. Please, Kaya, take it away. Well, here we are. Another year's gone by. Congratulations and happy anniversary, everybody. Ooh, that's good.
it again always oh my god yeah watching her perform that again i just like how far the show has come how incredible kaya still is it gets better and better <laughs> she gets better and better if i don't mind losing to her at showgirls you know how i, I told know. you i was like oh i hate losing but like when somebody's that good you're like, you're like duh yeah fine yeah. thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you you guys, Jonathan's going to treat us to a really special seven minute video right now. Seven minutes, Jonathan? It's like a, a look back at the last yeah. year together yeah. and uh, like some highlights from our first year doing this. Yeah, so join us in this little video to celebrate one year of incredible guests, interviews, performances, chit chat. And then we're going to come right back and talk to Murray about White Lotus. Yeah. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, guys. What's up? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. We are so happy to have you all here with us, and we are so happy to be here. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Good, Good morning, morning everybody. everybody. Wake up, wake up, wake up, in Provincetown. This week, featuring... Wake up, wake up. We are reporting live from Washington, D.C., and right now we are here at the Lincoln Memorial. If you don't know, the Lincoln Memorial is a memorial to the only president to ever have done more for black Americans than Donald Trump. He said so himself. I don't, I don't know about all that. Yeah, but it's all—it's all really majestic. It's so crazy to be here doing this right now. Right, I—it's especially on election day. I would feel like there'd be like people everywhere, but they're not. Yeah, it's, it's really, chill. really quiet. It's just like here. joggers and us, and joggers staring at us, wondering what we're doing. Hi, everyone. We are as close to the White House as you can get at the moment. Um, we are right at the end of Black Lives Matter Boulevard. Here. off a gay marriage before the gay community did in terms of the national community. Everybody's like, oh my God, she's for gay marriage. I'm like, well, yes. Thank you. Love is love. And you know, I give credit to people like Coretta Scott King. I give credit to Eleanor Holmes Norton. I give credit to all of those who came before 
including Barry Rustin. Those who came before, they were willing to march. And they were not only marching for black lives, they were marching for every American citizen to be treated with love and dignity and respect. And for me, that is who I am. I come out of that tradition and I'm not going back. I'm going to go forward and I'm going to bring my gay brothers and sisters together with my black brothers and sisters, my white brothers and sisters, my Jewish brothers and sisters, my Muslims. We have to march for equality for all. Y'all don't hear me, y'all just want to dance. I'm a loud, proud, sort of stentorian homosexual, and I, I know that that's going to happen. Um, the, the issues of what's happening in urban communities, the things that are happening with black and brown communities, that the, the sort of the homophobia combined with racism, combined with classism, combined with sexism, those things are significantly more impactful than any homophobia I get. No, we just figured that January 6th was supposed to be this really celebratory moment for people like you, for people like John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock. And so I'm sorry you didn't get to celebrate like you normally would have, but we, we thought about that. And so we brought you a little champagne so that you could have your celebratory moment now with us. Let's celebrate. Ooh, congratulations, God. Julian. Then baby girl, get on the floor, get on the floor, Ooh, you know what to do. It's, this is Wake Up Province now, right? Yeah. Like, wake up. If you're watching this, like, I want you to wake up and know how this place was built and became the place that it is. And just when you're walking down the street, just think of what has gone on here and how it's always been the bastion of free speech and free art and just free to be you and me and respect and dignity and openness. And we have to maintain that. I think that uh, speaks about uh, the progress in science uh, and, uh, uh, and the incredible work of many people, right? Not only Moderna, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, everyone that actually uh, put uh, all their heart uh, in, uh, in getting this done uh, as soon as possible. You want to know you can be Uncle Sam with the overtime. Do the show. This like, is the homo <laughs> agenda right here, folks. Suck it, Pullman. Could someone grab the door for a... Oh, oh my God! <laughs> oh my God, I'm gonna die. Hi. Hi. Good morning, Miss Richfield. Morning. Does someone have coffee for Miss Richfield? <laughs> Careful. Oh, Careful. Your espadrilles. <laughs> Even my slippers are lovely. Yeah, Welcome, Miss Richfield. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. It's How so good doing? to see you. Everyone. Good morning. <laughs> wake up. Wake up, wake up. In Provincetown. This week. Here you go. Good. So we'll just kind of lift this up. You lied. Can I have some <laughs> Well, it didn't explode. That's true. It didn't and explode. And they don't even bother us. Yeah, they're, you know? they're, they're just like... Who are you? I'm surprised they're not enraged that you just ripped the roof of their home off. Yeah, right, they're super chill. <laughs> no, really, can I have some coffee? Wake up, wake up.
episode, darling. Wasn't that darling? I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> Harrison's like, oh, remember when that shirt fit? I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was truly special. Jonathan, thank you so much for putting that together. To see all the guests we've had, all the performers, and all the people willing to come chat with me and Bob, these two crazy people. Um, it's truly been an honor over the past year. We are so excited to see what the future holds for us. Keep doing what we're doing highlight the incredible community that has kind of helped us do what we're doing. Thank you to everybody that's been there every step along yeah. the way, you guys, and you at home as well. Now, up next is the trailer for Murray's new show, The White Lotus, which debuts next Sunday, July 11th on HBO, written and directed by the one and only Mike White, who I love so, so much. Uh, check this out. It's really funny. The goal is to disappear behind our masks as pleasant, interchangeable helpers. It's tropical kabuki. Aloha. A happy to be here. We're on our honeymoon. You're such valued guests. Welcome to the White Lotus. Are they bigger? Nicole, they're fucking huge. I haven't seen them in a while. It's cancer. Swole balls. Did they biopsy your balls, Dad? Not yet. Mom! Am I interrupting? I know it's only your honeymoon. Oh my God, look at her face. Rachel, you were such a beautiful bride, but also very pale. But now you have a little more color and it looks great. Thanks. You are so talented. Oh. Do you really know what you're doing? Yeah. You think you could have dinner with me at the hotel tonight? Um, I, I get off at seven. Yeah, that's good. I mean, like a couple minutes after seven at the at the restaurant. Sounds great. Being a young man, this time right now can't be easy. Why? Because we can't harass girls anymore? No. Well. He thinks I'm an asshole. Were you an asshole? I guess I'm just wondering what um, you might be able to do for us to make us feel better. No, I was actually trying to not be an asshole. That you failed? I just walked around. Please enjoy. Belinda is the best. Good, I'll make an appointment. If she's not booked with me. Sometimes just watching them eat every night makes me want to gouge my eyes out. Belinda! Belinda! What I want is to speak to your boss. Fuck this place! I don't think it's the most romantic hotel in Hawaii, do you? It's perfectly fine, but are you finding it very romantic? Okay. It's nice. So excited to see this. I know. Tune in next Sunday. Jennifer Coolidge is in it. Molly mm -hmm. Shannon. Steve's on, who I know you have a crush on. Uh, and in the, maybe, I mean, you're going to be happy to hear this. In the pilot episode, spoiler alert, you see what appears to be Steve Zahn's balls. He's like, mm -hmm. look at my balls. Cute. Yeah, it's not yeah. like a, a blink and you miss it. It's like, look, jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Can't wait. <laughs> With that being said, let's bring on Murray Bartlett, the cool. star. Yeah, please welcome to the show, Murray. Welcome back oh to the show. Oh, my God. Oh. oh, here we go. Here oh. we go. Oh. Murray, oh. you are so. You are I feel sweetest. like we should be making some kind of statement about candles in the wind or something. Oh, but. thank you so much. Happy Murray. anniversary. Thank you so much. One candle to celebrate your first anniversary, two cakes to kind of bless your second year. Mm -hmm. um, and just, I just wanted to say thank you to you guys for being such a ray of light in this really kind of intense year and for creating this beautiful meeting place for us. It's been so joyful and so wonderful to um, just have this kind of uh, place where we can all connect when we couldn't connect. You know? So thank you. It's, thank you, so you guys are amazing. And here's to your second year. Yes. Make a wish. Make a wish. I know it's raining cupcakes, so you can just kind of throw them uh. over your shoulder. If you <laughs> Who's complaining? <laughs> um, and honestly, thank you. You were our first guest when we had this kind of wacky idea. Most people were like, okay. And you were like, yes, I'll do it. 
and so thank you so much for making our first episode so special, setting the bar for so high for the <laughs> quality of people we got on our show. Oh, it was my honor to come to be one of the first guests. And, and I love that our one year anniversary your anniversary is right around when your show is starting. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's just kind of fated, don't it you? Is. Do you want me to take it for you and put it down? I'll you. <laughs> this is such good timing. <laughs> yeah. And so you are, I mean, I love you, you're a good friend, you're a ray of light wherever you go. This is pretty dark, this is dark for me, so I know it's dark for you, this show. Like, have you ever done anything this dark? I don't think so. You know, I think I've always wanted to work with Mike White because he does dark so well. But I think one of the clever things about what he does and one of the great things about this show is that it's really funny. And it's, it's kind of disarming in a way because it's, it's a group of amazing actors who are, you know, kind of comic geniuses, Jennifer mm -hmm. Coolidge, you know, I mean, this, it's an amazing group, but it disarms you with the humor and then it kind of like hits you with a real punch, I think. There's some real kind of um, intense themes in this show. And mm -hmm. it's, it, uh, Mike White just creates such a great balance of that kind of comedy and darkness, I think. And when you read the script, were you like, just so excited to plumb the depths of like, I mean, I don't want to give too much away, but your character goes to kind of a low place after, you know, something, sort of a trauma yeah. in the beginning. Yeah, it kind of unravels. Yeah. <laughs> really? um, yeah, I mean, I got the audition with just the scenes for the audition, and then I read the first uh, script, and then I said yes, because it was, it's so beautifully written, and it's such a great cast, and I've always wanted to work with Mike White. So I didn't really know what happened. I didn't know the extent of the kind of roller coaster that my character goes on. So it was a real great surprise. <laughs> and you know, that's it's that that kind of this kind of roller coaster that, that my character goes on is such a gift for an actor. Like that's what you want. You get to just you know explore all the facets of the character. He's, um, yeah, he's complicated. And, and, you know, again, Mike White writes incredibly real, I think, mm -hmm. and complicated characters. And real in a way that is, that we don't often see, but, but because I think it's actually a reflection of reality, I think we all are a bit insane and we have all these different kind of facets. And I think he captures that really beautifully and especially in this character, like you, you know, you see, it's, it's at a hotel, I'm a hotel manager, and you see him like playing that role, but then you get to see why a person puts that kind of front up and all the stuff that might be bub bubbling underneath, you know? So it's, uh, yeah, it's like, it's an amazing thing a as an actor to have that kind of complexity to, to dive into. I don't think you've seen it yet, but there's, so he's the manager of this hotel mm -hmm. and your hospitality voice is great. Like we all have that, like the voice yeah. that you do to the I've guests. I've had the best teacher. <laughs> wow. Well, I said, I, there's, there's a scene where he like sticks a bottle of champagne in an ice bucket and he goes, please enjoy. And it's that like angry smile. I was channeling you though. <laughs> and I was like, that is so us at the Red Inn. It's yeah. Peter, who is the manager. No, it really, I, ha I don't know that I've related to a character more. Like, right. I can't think of another character. I mean, <laughs> except for what happens later. But like the beginning, the hospitality part. Mm -hmm. But like, I, you come to this realization in the first episode where you're like, I've been standing next to somebody for eight hours not even recognizing what they're going through. And I think it like changes, like you go through like a tremendous change in this. And it's something that I wish like a lot of people could experience. It's like recognizing where you're failing and what other people around you are experiencing. Yeah. And that was just really touching to me. Oh, good. Yeah. I mean, I think it's interesting because it's, you know, the show is about this, this group of, of guests coming to this high sort of high end um, resort and the guests don't necessarily go through that trans transformation, right. which I think is right. You know, yeah. that's that's often what happens in this kind of hierarchy that you have. And it is kind of a microcosm of our society uh, that there are, you know, this sort of entitled privileged people or tends to be at the top. And not all privileged people obviously are entitled in this way, but these particular this particular group is. And so there isn't necessarily that self-awareness, but there are other characters in the show, obviously, that are, you know, hugely impacted and kind of forced to to go through a sort of, uh, I don't know, a, a bit of a self-awareness, I guess. And you see glimmers of it in some of these characters, but it, 
I hope that that's what this show does. I think, you know, some of these entitled characters um, exist in all of us of course. and we have to be really on guard against them. And I, I, I think it sort of holds a mirror up to that in a really great way uh, and, and hopefully does what, what you say. It makes us be a little more aware of those aspects of ourselves and, you know, makes us be less like assholes, right. <laughs> basically. Yeah. Just kind of treat each other better, you know? And I think um, it's funny to see it, see people treating each other bad, but it's also, it's, it's dark and it's confronting and it should be because we all fall into that trap uh, at, at, at some point and uh, it's really worth looking at. Yeah. Um, being a gay icon yourself, <laughs> Well, thank you. <laughs> um, from one gay icon to another. <laughs> there is so much love here. <laughs> but um, you, you worked with Jennifer Coolidge, who like kind of has always been an icon, but like right. as of late has very much become a queer icon. And um, everyone, right. I, someone recently said that like something in gay DNA is like you can do a good Jennifer Coolidge impersonation. <laughs> You're not going to ask me to do a Jennifer Coolidge. I mean, <laughs> I kind of want to, but like I don't think I could. Was, I just, how does anybody get anything done around her? I would be right. laughing the whole time. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> I mean, I didn't have a lot of scenes with her, um, but one of the few scenes I had with her, it was almost impossible to do. She, she's just. She's so brilliantly in the moment and so full of just creative genius. Mm -hmm. So it just pours out and it's almost impossible to not laugh out loud. And so the, the first take in one of the first scenes I had with her, we did, me and the other actor, like we held it together as long as we could, but she just kept going on and on <laughs> and on with this stream of like brilliant, you know, comic stuff. And so, yeah, we lost our shit. But she's also, it, I mean, uh, interesting, maybe not interestingly, just kind of like, it's, it's a beautiful thing to know that she's, she has that kind of joy, joyfulness as a person, but a lot more self-awareness. She's kind of aware of like what she's, what she's doing and uh, which she tends not to be in the characters that she plays, right. but she's uh, very kind and, um, yeah, there's just, there's a real sort of, there's a good person beneath all that kind of comic genius, which is, which was sweet to know. But yeah, she, I mean, it was a riot every time she was on set. She, it was amazing. And also, you're going to know this when you watch it, but there's a lot of pathos to her character as well. And stuff, she's doing stuff that you don't always see her doing because she is so funny. And I love to yeah. see a really funny person go there mm -hmm. and have that like really emotional moment. Like she's talking about her mother passing away and it's just, I mean... I cried at it. And I'm like, Jennifer Coolidge is making me cry. She's a great actor. She is. And she doesn't often uh, get to sort of plumb those depths outside of the, like, you know, the, the amazing moments that she right. has in, in films that she does. But, yeah, it was, I mean, this role was written for her and, and it really kind of, she also goes on this great sort of roller coaster and really, um, yeah, you see all facets of that character that, that, she is, you know, obviously incredibly funny, but it's it's a really tragic character in so many ways, and she's she's got that amazing depth, and it's uh, yeah, it's really it made me cry too. It's beautiful to see. And I just want to remind everybody that I called that Oscar for the Octopus movie. <laughs> I'm calling a Best Supporting Actor Emmy right now Aww. in a mini series. I'm really good at this. <laughs> you, you you know I do these awards contests at my house. Right. We watch yes. the award shows and we fill out a draw. Yeah. I always win. I'm always right. He's going to win. <laughs> this is such good work. Oh, thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. Of course. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the show. Of again. course. Anytime. Yeah. <laughs> Be sure guys. to tune in to The White Lotus on HBO. Next Sunday, July 11th. Can't and then wait. six weeks after that. Or like every week for six weeks right. is what six I meant. Episodes. Yeah, six Slow episodes. Slow rollout. Yeah. 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 Like, reg like normal TV. Like you can't Remember? watch them all at once. Remember? <laughs> or wait six weeks and then binge it, I guess. Yes. Yeah. 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 Awesome, congratulations. Thank you. And thank you for coming. Thank of you course. so much. Of course. Uh, we want to thank our sponsors, Be Well Cannabis Dispensary, the Adam Howard Metalworking Studio at 3 Bradford Street. I think he's here. He was here earlier. He yeah. brought us some relish cupcakes. Yeah. Um, and also um, Cafe Heaven. Be sure to stop by. Um, Cafe Heaven is open for dinner most nights, but Wednesday they're doing a really fun little get together. It's called Halo at Heaven. It's hosted by Margaret, Katie Ledoux, and also Quinn. So stop by, have a cocktail. It's just open bar and, or not open bar, but the bar is open. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! 
<laughs> you guys are gonna be so busy. Yeah, so busy. But um, so I hang out with everyone. There's snacks, order a drink, uh, post tea, prefag bash, Wednesday nights, Halo at Heaven. Happy Independence Day, everybody, and thank you for waking up in Provincetown. Wherever you are. We'll see you next week. <laughs>